Hello and welcome to The Suburban Dad. My name is Tim. I am a father of two young kids. Our son is almost four and our daughter is 17 months. I look forward to sharing videos about bourbon with you through the lens of fatherhood. <laughs> start this first episode by going over some terminology for especially for those who are just starting out with bourbon uh, but even if you've been drinking for a little while there's probably some things that might not be super clear or you might benefit from hearing so first of all not all whiskey is bourbon but all of bourbon is whiskey okay so you have whiskey and then a subcategory of that would be bourbon also, a subcategory of whiskey would be scotch, Irish whiskey, rye whiskey, etc. So what does it mean for a bottle to be bourbon? Good question. So bourbon has to be made in the United States. Okay, It's a U.S. only product. It has to be made from at least 51% corn. Okay, so when they make a whiskey... They use corn, wheat, barley, rye, different grains to make the whiskey. So in order for it to be considered bourbon, it has to be made from at least 51% corn. Now that is what's known as the mash bill, that combination of grains that makes up the flavor of the whiskey. When they distill the whiskey, it can't be distilled more than 160 proof. Okay, so 80% alcohol. So that's before they add it to the barrel. When they put it in the barrel, it has to be no more than 125 proof. When they add it to the barrel, which has to be a new charred oak barrel. You can look up online, they show videos of having the barrels over a fire device and it literally just chars and makes the wood all black inside. You can use all of those ingredients in the same process, but if you make it in, say, Germany, it's not a bourbon. It could be whiskey, but it's not bourbon. Now, you could have what's called a wheated bourbon or a high rye bourbon. Those mean that those other grains, like wheat or rye, are, higher, are a higher percentage but still not more than the 51% corn. So also with a rye whiskey, it has the same qualifications as bourbon, but instead now it has to be made from at least 51% rye. So back in January of 2020, I was out at dinner celebrating an event with my wife and we we're having some delicious steak and other grilled meat. And I asked the waiter, hey, could I get a glass of whiskey that has kind of a smoky flavor to it? Because I figured that would go well with the meat. So he brought me a glass and I tried it and it was exactly what I was looking for. Whoever that guy is, thank you, waiter, because you did a great job pairing that whiskey. It was a very nice compliment to the meal. So I asked him, hey, what was that whiskey you got? Oh, it's called Knob Creek. Knob Creek, okay. Wanted to remember it so I could go to the store and get some for myself. Oh. I went to the store and I'm looking. Um, I found Knob Creek, okay, great. And I look, there's Knob Creek, and then next to it was another bottle of Knob Creek, but it was different. And there was another bottle, Knob Creek, but it was different again. There were like five or six different bottles that all said Knob Creek, and they were all different. So I thought, well, crap. How am I supposed to know which bottle I had and liked? So I ended up getting the their regular, their go-to is nine-year bourbon whiskey. Okay, it was 100 proof. And at the time I had no idea, okay, what does all this stuff mean? So I was looking, I have a bottle here that looks just like it. It's a little bigger size, but same information. So it's Knob Creek. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon. Um, it says 
a hundred proof small batch none of that made any sense to me before so I also looked and right next to it was another bottle of Knob Creek smoked maple okay so this one is 90 proof also small batch okay but it's smoked maple it says it's got natural flavors in it okay well what the heck then there was another bottle similar to this one single barrel select now this one's 120 proof and it's got a bunch of dates on here and numbers and letters and pfft, darned if I know what the heck that means so I grabbed the the basic model which I thought well this is the cheapest hopefully this is the one that I liked so it was thankfully I grabbed the right one there was also a bottle of Knob Creek rye there was a bottle of Knob Creek 12 year 100 proof um, so I thought, man, okay, glad I lucked out. So what does this all mean? For, let's start with small batch. What does small batch mean? Well, it means when they're getting whiskey from the barrel and they're putting it into bottles, small batch means that it's a mixture of multiple different barrels. Okay, but there's no restriction on the definition for small batch. So it could have been 10 barrels, could be 50, could be 200 just means that it's a mixture of barrels. That would be from the same distil distillery, but it, it's a mixture. The single barrel, that's literally, it means literally like it sounds, one barrel of whiskey went into this bottle. Now you can have multiple bottles from the same barrel, but it's not a mixture. It's from one particular barrel only. Um, so why would you want small batch versus single barrel? Well, small batch allows you to be more precise as far as getting a consistent flavor profile because you're able to blend and mix whiskeys in different barrels to help achieve the same flavor. Because just because you have barrels in the same warehouse with the same ingredients inside does not guarantee that they're gonna come out tasting the exact same because you get different areas of the warehouse that are hotter or colder or have more breeze coming in, or maybe one barrel is made from this oak tree and next barrel is made from this oak tree and the, those oak trees grew up in different places and they have different flavors in the wood that translates into the whiskey, all kinds of variables. So small batch allows you to be more consistent. Single barrel can also be very good it allows for more variety though because you there's no guarantee what that particular barrel is going to taste like in terms of proof so the, the bottle that I got was a hundred proof so it means it was 50% alcohol by volume ABV so what does that mean well at the time didn't mean anything to me I liked the taste of it uh, couldn't really tell you much about it other than it was smoky at the time what really helped me to learn about proof was when I was at the store looking for a new bottle of bourbon and I had I've enjoyed Maker's Mark just their standard bottle you know the red wax and the seal on there and it's a fine easy drinker nice entry-level bourbon not a strong flavor but decent and so I was looking at that I was looking at one called cask strength Maker's Mark cask strength and it was on sale. It was like $10 off. And I thought, man, well, this is cool. I like the regular makers. This seems like a special bottle and it's on sale. So yeah, I'll try it. Didn't even notice what proof it was. It was about 109 point something proof. When I tried that puppy, I almost choked a bit because it was pretty strong. The higher the proof, typically the stronger the bourbon, the stronger the flavor, the more Mm, it's got so I quickly realized oh it matters what the proof is on a bottle so 100 proof is kind of middle of the road maybe on the higher side of middle 109 proof is definitely getting up there and so cask strength what does that mean it means that they they got 
whiskey from barrel and they bottled it without cutting it with water. So on some barrels like that, on cask strength or barrel proof, they might say uncut, meaning they didn't add any water. Because when you have a nice even proof like 100 or this Knob Creek Select was 120 proof, that means that they they used water to attain that exact number because when you just draw the whiskey out of the barrel it's not going to be a perfect number. So with this Maker's Mark cask strength it was 109 point something something. And so that's just an indicator of it being a single barrel cask strength. So they didn't really do anything to modify it. Now sometimes you might see straight bourbon which is a, a whole nother descriptor. Basically what that means is it has to be aged for at least two years in a charred oak barrel. Um, now if it's less than four years old then they have to say so on the bottle. It has to include an age statement. If you see that it's straight bourbon and it doesn't say two years old, aged 36 months, then you can bet that it's over four years old. Most bourbons and whiskeys come in standard size bottles, which is 750 milliliters. Sometimes you can get larger bottles like this one, which is 1.75 liters, or you can get just one liter. But as a rule of thumb, if you see a bottle, it's going to be 750 milliliters. Sometimes you can even get a smaller bottle, which would be 375 milliliters. Um, the little sample bottles that you see, those are 50 milliliters. So that's something to be aware of when you're looking at prices for bottles. Just take note of if something looks really cheap compared to where it, what it should be, it might just be a different size bottle. So just take note of that. Okay, enough of this talking. I've getting thirsty. I want to try some bourbon with you guys. On this channel, I want to share bottles that you can get pretty easily. If not, just walk right in the store or liquor store and just get it off the shelf. Uh, because there are so many bottles that are delicious, just great, that people don't talk about because they want to be popular and talk about, you know, oh, these unicorn bottles like Blanton's or Stag or Eagle Rare and E.H. Taylor, those are great bottles, but a lot of times they get overhyped because they get so popular and then they just get out of control. So I want to start today by showing you a bottle that I've really come to enjoy quite a bit. It's called Makers 46. So it's kind of like the more robust big brother of the standard Makers bottle. So, as you can see, it's still got that characteristic red wax and the Maker's Mark seal on it. So, what I enjoy about this bottle is it's pretty easy to drink. It's got a smooth feel to it, and it still has some flavor, though. It ends with a little bit of spice and a little bit of warmth that you experience. So, it's not just watery and weak. Um, so... When I pour a bourbon, I like to let it breathe for just a minute, especially if it's something I haven't tried before. I want to let it air out a little bit. And um, I try to drink bourbon neat as often as possible, so no ice, no water. But sometimes it makes the drink better when you add a little bit of ice or a little bit of water. So. Yeah, sometimes people add it just because they can't handle drinking whiskey. That's a different thing. But oftentimes you can get more flavor out of a, a pour of bourbon if you do add a little ice or a little water. This one, I don't really need any of that. I just like it straight up. Um, this comes in at 94 proof. So again, on the lower end of middle of the road. Um, by the way, I think I forgot to mention earlier, bourbon has to be at least 80 proof 
um, for it to be considered bourbon. Whiskey has to be 80 proof. Can't be less than 80 proof if it's going to be a bourbon. So this one is 94 proof. And um, so I like to give it a little smell first. And I'll try to, whenever I review a bottle for you guys, I'm going to try and keep it in terms that are understandable and relatable and not just, oh, I like it because it tastes good. Uh, or uh, hints of sawdust with poplar blossom and rose hips. Okay, I don't know what, uh, yeah, when people start using terms like that, I don't know what the hell that means. So, this one, so when you smell it, it's called the nose. What do you get on the nose of the bourbon? Mmm, so this one's got a nice fruity profile. Um, yeah, like red fruits, like a like strawberry. Mm -mm. It's got a little bit of vanilla flavor. You'll hear many times when you're watching somebody drink a glass of bourbon, they're going to use the terms vanilla and caramel because those flavors are in almost every bourbon to some degree, some more prominent than others. But that comes from the bourbon's interaction with the wood when it's aging in the barrel. Okay, so most of the time that's going to be there to some degree. So let's have a sip here. Mm. Mm. That is a very nice pour. It's just, it's a fairly cheap bottle, under 30 bucks. You can walk into any grocery store, liquor store, and find it. It's just, it's really nice. It starts off with a smooth feel to it on your tongue, almost coats your tongue a little bit in a good way. Um, again, there's the red fruit like strawberry. A little bit of caramel taste to it. Caramel butterscotch, a little oakiness, which again, try not to use terms that don't make sense, but if you have somebody, have you try a bottle that tastes oaky, you'll know what I mean. Um, it's got kind of a dry aspect to it. Uh, tastes almost a little woody. Um, so I'll try to keep it simplistic. That's as technical as I'm going to get with flavors, hopefully. Um, but besides that, it mm, yeah, so fruity. At the end, there's a little bit of a spice kick to it. Now it's important to distinguish spice flavor versus alcohol burn. The former is very nice and enjoyable. The latter, I I don't enjoy alcohol burn really, but um, maybe there's some people who do. So in this case, this has more of a spice to it, not really alcohol. Spice meaning it has flavor. It's it's like um, maybe it has a little bit of cinnamon hint to it, or nutmeg or cloves. You might hear somebody say baking spices, so it's something along those lines. Sometimes it even has like a peppery, chili flavor to it. This one's more along the lines of like a baking spice. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. It's, uh, yeah, smooth, fairly creamy, and uh, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of red fruits like strawberry, and uh, just a very, very nice pour. 2020 was a great year for me to... <laughs> get into whiskey a little bit more because there wasn't much else to do out in the world and I can enjoy a nice pour of bourbon in my own home without having to leave my family and it's even better when you can share it with friends or family and I really just like learning about it, drinking it, and talking about it. So I look forward to sharing all that with you in more videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you really enjoyed what you saw, please share this with others who might enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm.